obviously every job has its ebb and flow, high points, low points. There are going to be times you're going, I just want to beat these children. And there'll be other times where you just can't get enough of them. How can you more consistently stay on the high side of the wave of children's ministry? Let me offer four just really practical suggestions. Most of this won't be new to you. I think one of the most important things to love any job is to feel that you're good at it. And you might feel competent for several years and they just feel like you've lost touch. That's why continuing training is so important. You have got to go to conferences. You, you've got to have a mentor in, in, in ministry. You've got to have other professionals in children's ministry that you're interacting with so that you're constantly being refreshed with new ideas, so that you're, you're always trying and failing at something new. A second thing, you've got to have Sabbath. The needs of children are perpetual. And they can absolutely wear you out. I know from, from youth ministry that hearing one more girl's story about being abused by her father, I, I just don't know if I can take it anymore. One more big football player that just falls into my arm weeping because his dad has left the family. You, you, I just don't, can't take it anymore. And the smaller the children and the more vulnerable they are, the more difficult that is going to become for you. Of all the ministers on staff, you, my friend, have to rest. You have to have times where you just put the ministry aside and you rest. And if you're not taking appropriate vacation time or Sabbath days or times of renewal, you're going to burn out. It is... It is not noble to burn out in ministry because the retraining of the next one and, and the time it takes to get your level of experience, it's just too costly. We need you healthy. Stay healthy. Third thing I would say, and this is just super practical, you're going to like your kids if you know them better. So just as the senior pastor is calling on people, you should be calling on kids. Obviously, uh, this is a bit of a challenge because you don't always have access to small children like you do to teens or adults. But if there's any way that you could take a kid for a Coke to McDonald's, I mean, if you're, if you're going to try to schmooze an adult, it's expensive. You've got to take them golfing or take them out to dinner. A kid, it's a, it, costs a, it costs a bag of French fries. And you should be uh, connecting with your kids outside. My, my wife is a, uh, she is an assistant to a librarian in public schools, done that for years. And it's so funny for me when I'm at Target with her and one of the kids from her school comes up, he's like, he's like, like you have a life outside of the school. And it's just this magic moment where this kid goes, Wow, you're a real person, and they fall in love with my wife. Of course, that's easy to do, but you're probably pretty easy to fall in love with, too. And if you could show up at a baseball game or come to a birthday party, I, I would even tell the parents, please invite me to your kid's birthday party because I may only be there five minutes, but I'd love to show up. That would make a world uh, of, of difference. 